What's up guys, welcome to another video. Now in this video, I wanna look at the top five drills that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now these things, once I can master to perfection, it really makes a huge difference in everything around what I'm doing. I don't care which discipline you're in, if you can master these drills and you can perfect them every day, it will make everything around what you're doing that much better. Now we recently uploaded two videos. One is the top five ways I like to use my hand and the other was the top five leg movements I like to do when, when riding my horses. Now all of these hand positions and these leg movements will all come into play in various situations, various times uh, during these drills, depending on the level of horse you're riding or what type of horse you're riding. So I really recommend that you look at those videos and watch those videos because it'll be very helpful to really master these drills down the road. Now training reining horses where you're not chasing a cow or you don't have much of a purpose than executing a perfect maneuver can make not much sense to the horse along the way. So you have to find ways to open up your horse's mind and always having a goal and something to do really, really helps. I keep preaching to my students often who try to attempt to lift their, their horse's shoulders and, and control the body and make their horse soft in the face. Well, what they, they do 90% of the time is just, is just kind of push with their legs and pull with their hands and look down at their at, at the horse's withers without any really destination in mind or, or, or really purpose for what they're asking their horse. So always having a place to go, a destination, something to look forward to, always be in a quarter of a circle ahead or, or, or five, six strides ahead of your horse when you're asking something is going to make a very big difference in how effective you are while using your leg and using your hands. Okay, so this is why that I came up with these drills. And the other reason, I remember the time that I decided that I was going to put these drills together and actually implement them in my program is when I was started to do clinics. I remember wondering what I was going going to do with my students during clinics. What can I do to do? I was trying to create a plan, a game plan or whatever, but every plan that I ever made was just out of the window within the first 10 minutes because I encountered problems I didn't anticipate to encounter. So whatever I had planned for this particular horse was not going to be really beneficial to this horse in particular. So what I decided to do was every single horse in, 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 in present at the clinic is I was going to, I wanted to see how far I could take them until they fell apart. Okay. So whether it's the first uh, drill number one up to drill number five. Most of the times if I only ask them, okay, lope off in a straight line towards down the arena. When you get to the end, I want you to make a tight counter canter circle and then don't close that circle, go across the arena, another counter canter circle and then come straight, that ba uh, straight back down towards me and stop next to me. And 95% of the times, if not more, um, they couldn't make that counter counter turn. It fell apart right there. Many couldn't make a lead departure decent enough, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to actually be in a straight line to, to get to that counter counter circle, let alone being able to do that counter counter circle, okay? So this is a very simple thing to do, but yet they have spent probably a year or more sometimes training and working on their horses. And yet all I asked them to do is lope off in that direction, make a tight counter counter circle at the end, and everything fell apart when attempting to do that, okay? So I remember that that really left a print in my mind and, and, and I've made it my goal from that point on that I wanted to be able to execute any of these things with my horses at any given time. So if you came up to me and said, Jonathan, do this, I wanted to be able to do it. So this is how I came up with those drills and I'm going to walk you through them right now. All right, now before we get started, a quick word about the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Koro. Koro is the ultimate online shop for horse people, kind of like Amazon. They offer a wide range of equine products from grooming and barn supplies, tax supplements, and everything in between. And that shipped directly to you at low cost and lightning speed. As one of the fastest growing online retailer, Koro adds over 100 products to their shop each week so you can be pretty confident to find what you're looking for. They're pretty much the number one source for all things horse and all the products that they recommend and sell are tried and trusted so you can be sure to be browsing through quality products products from the industry's leading brands. On top of all that, Koro has some of the lowest prices online and outstanding customer service there for you to answer any questions you may have. And honestly, it's really refreshing to deal with a company that's built and ran by horse people for horse people. So go and check them out at www.coroshop.com and be sure to use promo code comfortzone10 for 10% off your first purchase. Now back to the video. 
All right, so drill number one is what I call the box, okay? So that's teaching the horse to really balance itself through straight lines and turns. So it's very simple, but it's just getting out of the routine of just always doing circles, where sometimes if all you're doing is circle and you have sometimes a horse dropping its shoulder here or pushing its rib cage out of the circle there, and they have sort of that gravitational pull towards the gate, or and then so you're only reacting to what they're doing. If the horse drops his shoulder, you lift the shoulder. The horse steers out of the, sh uh, of the circle, you steer them back in. And too often I see a really odd shaped circle being repeated and repeated and repeated and the riders are reacting to what the horse is doing. So just by getting out of that circle and, and building a, a box around your circle, so making a straight line turning 90 degrees, straight line turning 90 degrees, all of a sudden you're taking charge, okay? You're no longer reacting to your horse, you're acting. You have a goal, you have a destination and sooner than rather than later you will see that your horse will stop thinking for himself and pay a lot more attention to what you're asking because he will feel that you are the person in charge, okay? Because you have a plan, okay? So this is a very simple drill, but highly effective. Now with greener horses, I like to only be able to make a straight line, a nice turn without my horse dropping its shoulder too much. And so, uh, so I keep this very basic. But if I have a broker horse, then I want to make my square really perfect. And I want to drive that hip under the horse, lift that shoulder as if I was setting up for a lead change. So basically every straight line around that square, no matter where I am in the arena, I want to feel like I could ask my horse to change lead and he would do it effortlessly. That's how I know that I have my horse perfectly straight well engaged under itself with his shoulder elevated and ready to execute something okay so keep that in mind when you're doing these exercises every time you're doing a straight line you want to release your horse when you, you feel your horse is in balance and holding itself properly but you also want to be working your horse and driving it through the battle, bridle and and really making it making your horse really use its body to its maximum and always having that in the back of your mind, could I change my horse's lead effortlessly right now, then you're probably doing the right thing. Now drill number two is one of my favorite. I call that one the pizza. The reason that I call it the pizza is because it's cut in shapes such as a pizza, okay? And, but the true benefit of this exercise that is similar in a way to the square because you're doing a turn in a straight line and a turn in a straight line. Well, where this changes from the square is that horses dropping their shoulders. So this exercise is actually great for young horses. It's also very good for very broke horses, but it's great for young horses because, well, everything gravitates now towards the center of that circle. So by steering through, steering in and going straight through that circle, steering in straight through that circles and repeating that, eventually that, gravita that gravitational pull will go away from the barn or whatever, wherever they are pulling you towards too, and it, it's going to be eventually more concentrated in the middle of that circle, okay? So this is benefit number one. But benefit number two, the main benefit is a horse that drops its shoulder can only drops its shoulder once. So it cannot drop it a second time, otherwise it'll fall. Okay, so this is the beauty of this exercise. Once you're at the end of your straight line and you turn back into your circle, okay, your horse may drop its shoulder through that turn. Well, what you will do is you will turn right away again to cut the other side of that pizza slice and go again straight through that circle. Okay, so by turning a second time, this is where your horse eventually will approach that first turn differently as he, uh, he figures out that shortly after you will be steering right through right through it again. So I really recommend that you don't wait more than one or two strides to turn again once you've made that first turn back into your circle from that straight line so that it discourages your horse to drop its shoulder the more that you repeat it. And when you feel that you can make both of those turns without your horse dropping that shoulder, then in that straight line, as you, as you come out of that second turn and you straighten up for that straight line through the circle, this is usually where your horse will be driving naturally under itself and having his shoulder elevated naturally because you just made two turns. So naturally it's got to pick itself back up. This is an opportune time to teach your horse to collect itself, push them in the bridle, get them to give you to your hand and, and start to gain control over their body. Again, I'm talking about young horses here, but it's also the perfect time to say, whoa, okay, the horse is driving under itself, his shoulders are elevated. You cannot have your horse better set up to stop, okay? So this is also a great exercise to teach your young horses to stop because you want to ask them to stop when they are uh, at, the, at the, the most ready to stop and there's no better exercise that I can think of to set them up for stopping. Drill number three is what I call the infinity. Now this one starts to get a little bit more tricky because it involves counter cantering. So it could be a little difficult for very green horses, but it's, it's, a, it's a good way to introduce your horse to counter cantering. Okay, so this is 
so 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 the infinity is is I call it that just because of the sine infinity and it's performing the infinity sine across the arena now if you want to do this easy and you want to start off easy with your horse then you make an an infinity sign or that's going to be more like a figure eight from top to bottom of your arena okay so you're going to be going uh, in a circle this way on the on the correct lead then you're going to make a diagonal across you're going to counter canter around the other end of the arena then make your straight line across then back on the correct lead and you're just going to keep doing that until your horse approaches that counter canter area getting ready for for uh, for the extra drive and the extra effort he'll need to make in order to get around that counter canter end of the circle and the more that you want to get control over your horse's body the broker your horse gets the tighter you can make you can make that infinity sign and do it more at the short end of your uh, of your arena rather uh, across the length of your arena and uh, but this is a good way to really get your horse into balance and really be in sync with your with your movement and giving you all of the time that you can get from depending on the size of your arena but giving you all the time that you can get to really teach your horse how to approach a movement like that just like I was saying earlier if I ask somebody to go straight down the arena and make a sharp counter counter turn that's where you Usually most people fall apart well that's understandable and this is not the starting point the starting point is making that curve into that counter canter as long as possible in order for the horse to have a chance to figure out how to approach it okay so this is how that we will move towards to and that's how I you know we introduce people to being able to do that but the ultimate goal is you want to make that uh, very tight 90 degree counter canter uh, uh, counter canter circle uh, turn where the horse is really really making the effort of using its body the proper way to execute that okay so but there's a there's a there's a way to, to the, there's a way that leads to that and it starts with the infinity. Now drill number four is by far my favorite. I call it the dog bone. The reason I call it that is because it looks exactly like a, like a dog bone. This exercise is actually very good if you have a cow horse or a reiner or even a bell horse. But if you have a horse that you want to teach to really uh, drive through a straight line and, 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 and be ready at the end of that straight line to do whatever it is that you ask it to do. Okay, so what I would like to, what I will do is I will go straight down the end of the arena. When I get to the end, I will do a tight counter canter circle, go across the arena, another tight counter canter circle, and then go back down the other end of the arena now at the other end of the arena I will do again a tight counter canter circle go across tight counter canter circle and go across now keep in mind if I don't close that second little circle okay then and I keep going across and I take the first line of which I came in from originally then I will be on the, actually the the, the the opposite lead so when I get down the other end of the arena I will not be doing a counter canter tight circle towards the outside but I will be on the correct lead so I will be doing a turn a, a tight circle on the correct lead okay so you can choose depending on where you close that circle at the other end and which line you take whether you take the inside or the outside line you can choose at the end of the arena when you go to the outside whether you'll be counter cantering or you'll be on the correct lead okay so this exercise you can you can do whatever you want with it, okay? But just giving it the dog bone structure and being able to do tight counter canter circles in the corner of the arena like that is actually very beneficial and it really teaches the horse to really approach that the end of the arena, elevating its shoulder and really driving under itself, which makes the entire run down to it uh, a lot more ready for, for quick action, such as rolling back, stopping or stopping a steer or going around a barrel or whatever you want to do with it. Now drill number five is what I call the snake. I don't like doing this exercise so much with young horses, but I love doing it with really broke horses. This is the exercise that I use to really, uh, really make my lead changes the mo very, very solid, okay? So it's a little bit like the dog bone or like any other exercise, except that this one, you will be doing a straight line uh, across the short side of your arena. So when you get to the, to the long side of the arena, then you can decide which way you want to go. And this is why I like this exercise, because your horse will always wonder whether you're going to be going left. and if you're on the left lead and left and you'd be doing a sharp turn on the correct lead and going back across the other way or you're going to be making a sharp turn on the counter canter going back the other way now you can make this snake with very tight turns or you can make your snake with wider turns but uh, the broker that the horses get I like to make very tight turns but where this exercise becomes really really cool is that your horse will always wonder so the horses that are not really trusting you they may start you know you will start to feel them think way before 
before defense comes and they may start making decisions on their own. So this is, this is where you don't need to be punishing the horse or panic. You just need to break it down, slow it down, make it a little wider, try again until you can make it tighter. But when you can make really tight circles in each direction and your horse just, you feel that your horse just really would actually run straight into the wall if you made it because he trusts that you will not, this is really where you want to get and that's when you really know that you got into your horse's mind. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you found any value in it, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so as it helps the algorithm and helps me grow and reach out to more people. All of these exercises and drills are explained into more details under the Comfort Zone Horse Training video series. So if you're not subscribed to that, you can give it a try for a seven day free trial. Um, you can browse through everything. And if it's something for you, then please subscribe as we will be adding more and more content um, from the foundation all the way to broke horses and everything in between. And if it's not something for you, then hey, no remorse. You can just back out of it, but stay tuned because more to come. And for those who are sticking with the program, I appreciate you very much. Until the next video, cheers.